My name is Dan Cogliano and I'm the developer of Zap Calendar. Zap Calendar is an advanced calendar application for the Joomla content management system. This is a video demonstrating some of the features of Zap Calendar. You can find more information about Zap Calendar at the website zapcalendar.com and you can find more information about Joomla at joomla.org. In this video, I will be demonstrating the features of the Google Maps plugin for Zap Calendar. Now this is one of my favorite plugins for Zap Calendar and I'm happy to show you some of the cool features of the plugin. I'll be using the demonstration website at demo.zapcalendar.com so you can try out the Google Maps plugin yourself without needing to set up your own Joomla website. You can also pause this video while trying out the features discussed here. Now also I'm using version 4.0.4 .4 of Zap Calendar so your results may vary depending on the version you are using. So this demo will have two sections. The first section will talk about the calendar browsing features of Zap Calendar when using the Google Maps plugin. And the second part, we will talk about the geocoding features of the plugin. So let's get started. We are going to use the demonstration website. So let's go ahead and we're going to move to demo.zapcalendar.com. So this is the home page for our demonstration website. We are going to go to the demo menu and select American History. So we are going to look at the American History calendar on the website. There's a lot going on here on this page to demonstrate uh, various features of, of Zap Calendar, uh, but we're primarily interested in the Google Maps plugin for this video, so uh, that is at the bottom of the page here. You see we have a group of uh, events on the map and this corresponds to the current month that we are in. So this is uh, April events. And they are also, the pins are color coded, so uh, they're color coded by the category that the event is in. So it makes a nice display and you can easily see which categories the events belong to. And we can browse the calendar. We can browse from month to month here. And as we browse the calendar, the events on the map automatically get updated. You can see that gets updated there. Uh, we can also browse uh, from week to week. Uh, that way we can see both the, the calendar and the map on the same page. So if we browse from week to week here, you'll see how the map updates itself uh, corresponding to the, the events for that week. All right, so let's um, switch back to month mode and we're going to take this one step further. We are going to actually hide the calendar and with that option we can display just the map for that particular month. So you can browse from month to month here. And uh, also uh, this is the month header plugin at the top here that's showing each each month and you can select a month specifically and go right to that month. You can also do that for the year. Um, so you can select months that way. So let's go to February. And another feature of the plugin is that it supports the category controller. Uh, right now we have all the categories enabled. I'm going to turn all of them off except for US presidents. So we will update the calendar and now we just see uh, presidential events on the calendar. And if we select Kentucky here, let's see who's that. Oh, that's Abraham Lincoln, whose birthday is February 12th. And if I click on the event title here, we'll actually see the event details come up. You'll be able to see all the information here about Abraham Lincoln. And at the bottom, we'll see there's also a, a map of that location in the event details.
All right, so let's turn on all the uh, categories back on. And another feature of the plugin is uh, that you can optionally enable this uh, location feature, which allows you to search for events within your area. So if I um, type in, I'm going to type in my hometown here of Annapolis, Maryland. And you can select the distance that you want to look for. Uh, these distances are customizable. You can also so change it from miles to kilometers for our metric friends. And uh, let's say, let's select 100 miles. I want to see what's near me in 100 miles radius. Uh, now this is me with the uh, the green pin and the star. That's that's my location. And it looks like there's one event within 100 miles. Let's um, let's increase it a little bit, maybe 250 miles. Let's see if there are more events there. Oh, there's a couple more there. And uh, you can select on the event, and uh, it'll tell you. Oh, this one is uh, William Henry Harrison. And it will also calculate the distance. It's about 115 miles away from my location. And you can also get directions using the Google Maps website. It will actually uh, uh, give you driving directions uh, from your your location to the event location. So that's a nice feature. All right, so uh, let's um, go ahead and talk about geocoding. Now, geocoding is a way to convert a mailing address to a latitude longitude point. Now in order to get events here on the map you need to have a latitude longitude point and usually people have addresses they don't have long, latitude longitude points uh, to, to put in so what the Google Maps plugin will do is allow you to put in a street address and the plugin will figure out the latitude longitude for that event so that it can be displayed on the map. So let's uh, show you how how that is done. We're going to change from the American History calendar to the Your Events calendar. Now this calendar allows you at the demonstration site to add new events. So uh, uh, the events stay there on the website for about two days. Uh, so this will be a good way to demonstrate how to uh, uh, create an event and uh, how the uh, Google Maps plugin will geocode your address. So uh, in order to do this we actually have to log in to create events on the website. So we're going to log in. There's a couple logins here that you can select. I'm going to use Franklin. Okay, now that we're logged in as Franklin, we can go ahead and add an event. All right, so there's uh, a minimum of three items that we have to enter to put in an event. We need a title, a category, and the event date. Uh, in addition, uh, for this demo, we actually have to also put in the location so that we can uh, geocode the event so that it'll, it will appear on the map. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put in uh, an event title. We'll just call it My Meeting. And category, we can select a category. I want to select a meeting since this is a meeting. And uh, we'll select an event date. We'll pick this date and uh, a location. So this is where we would put in the street address for the event and uh, the plugin will uh, geocode that in the background. So let's go ahead and put in the location. I'm going to put in Independence Hall, which is in Philadelphia, PA. Alright, so we put that in, and if we scroll to the bottom of this page here, you'll see, oh, we've already got, uh, Google Maps has already uh, figured out where that location is, 
based on the street address that we put in and we can zoom in here just to see whether it that's the right location yep that's where it is it found it uh, spot on there so so that's how the Google Maps plugin will will geocode an address now that was a specific address that I put in there uh, you may have an address that uh, may not be specific uh, it's more of a generic address it could be like uh, meeting room 3 uh, uh, Zap Calendar uh, uses uh, Google Maps and Google Maps will not be able to figure out where that location is you can have a generic and we're going to put in actually a generic address here we're going to put in uh, let's clear this out let's put in uh, McDonald's now McDonald's is a restaurant chain all over the world so they have thousands of locations so uh, I doubt that uh, Google Maps will find the McDonald's in Annapolis for me so let's see where it found uh, that does not look like Annapolis. Let's see where we are. Uh, oh, we're in the Netherlands. <laughs> so uh, that's definitely not where I want to have the meeting. So I want to find a McDonald's in Annapolis. And uh, I have an address that I'm going to put in here where for the geocode location. And it's at 1941 West Street. Annapolis, Maryland. Okay, so if I geocode that, it um, will find the address and convert it to latitude longitude. Yeah, it looks like that's where it's right on West Street. That looks like Annapolis. So it did find find it, even though I have McDonald's here in the uh, location. It will uh, allow you to still put in a latitude longitude using. Uh, this feature here. So we'll go ahead and save that. All right, item successfully submitted. We're going to go ahead and close that out, and you'll see that our meeting is now on the calendar and it's on our map. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about uh, is uh, bulk geocoding. Now we just did a geocoding for a single event, but uh, bulk geocoding takes that one step further where you would uh, automatically geocode uh, a lot of points, a lot of events. And uh, this can happen for a couple of reasons. Uh, you may have a Zap calendar on your website, uh, but you've just installed the, uh, the Google Maps plugin. So you may have a lot of events on your website that do not have latitude longitude points. So uh, that's one one scenario where you may have events without uh, that have not been geocoded. Another example could be uh, importing events from another uh, external uh, calendar using either the iCalendar uh, import feature of Zap Calendar or the uh, comma separated value uh, import that's also supported. So you may have imported a bunch of events to your uh, website that do not have uh, geocoded points. So um, well, there's a feature with uh, the Google Maps plugin that allows you to automatically geocode those points and what will happen is once that's enabled uh, in the background uh, the, um, the Zap calendar will look for events that have not yet been geocoded uh, and as users browse your website uh, we don't have any here at the moment but uh, this is the, well, as people browse your calendar and it sees these uh, non geocoded locations, it will automatically geocode those. So you will eventually see those events on your map. Now, another uh, nice feature is in the background. So I'm going to show you that. You won't be able to do this on your own unless you have a, uh, a website with, with the Zap Counter plugin enabled. But I'll show you another another feature. Uh, this is uh, the Zap Calendar panel screen. We're going to go to the Tools page here. And there's a feature here under Google Maps that says uh, Show Events That Have Not Been Geocoded. Now there may be uh, reasons why uh, Google Maps could not find a geocoded point 
for your uh, event. Uh, it could be that the uh, it could be like a generic address like we put in previously, or it could be um, a new neighborhood that maybe is not on the map yet from for um, Google Maps. Or it could be a could be a number of reasons. Just can't find uh, that particular uh, description of the event in uh, in its database. So uh, if you select this, you can uh, get a list of the events that. Uh, have not been geocoded and we have a couple here so we'll uh, select one of these we'll select New York Yankees at Seattle and we'll see what the uh, location is the location is Safeco Field in Seattle and uh, we go to plugins Google Maps. Nope, there's no latitude longitude. So it does have a location, but no latitude longitude. So um, what we will do is uh, I've looked up the address for this uh, stadium, and I'm going to put that in manner. This is just like the front end, where you can put in a, a address to geocode <coughs> the location, and the address is. 1251st Avenue, South Seattle, Washington. So I'm going to go ahead and geocode that. And I like that address much better. So, and we can zoom in just to make sure we are in the right location here. And looks like we are there, Safeco Field. Although it's not exactly where the stadium is, the mailing address could be uh, different than the physical location of the building. So, uh, what you can do in those cases where it's not an exact match you can actually click and drag the pin to that spot where it needs to be and if and this, as you see as I move this around you can see the latitude longitude points change on on the screen there so I'm going to um, go ahead and put it uh, right there and then you can save the event, and then that uh, event will have will be geocoded. Well, that wraps up the features of this uh, video uh, for the Google Maps plugin. I hope this helps you in understanding the features of Zap Counter and the Google Maps plugin. For more information about Zap Counter, you can visit the website zapcounter.com. Uh, which is right here and there's more information on the website about uh, configuring the Google Maps plugin in the support section of the site you also find information there about Zap Weather which is another application that I wrote which is a free Joomla component that displays weather from any location in the USA or its territories uh, and it also has no commercial links whatsoever, which a lot of the weather applications do, so uh, you can uh, use that without worrying about uh, having uh, links to external uh, commercial websites. So while you're visiting the website, please click the like button for Facebook so you, you can receive future updates of Zap Calendar uh, through Facebook and then Zap Weather. And you'll also get notified of uh, new videos like this one when they become available. You'll be first, the first to know when new videos are posted. Again, my name is Dan Cogliano, and thank you for watching.